Mount Rushmore National Memorial is centered around a sculpture carved into the granite face of Mount Rushmore in the Black Hills in Keystone, South Dakota. Sculptor Gutzon Borglum created the sculpture's design and oversaw the project's execution from 1927 to 1941 with the help of his son Lincoln Borglum. The sculptures feature the 60-foot heads of Presidents George Washington Thomas Jefferson Theodore Roosevelt and Abraham Lincoln the memorial park covers 1278.45 acres, 2.00 square miles, 5.17 square kilometers and is 5725 feet, 1745 meters above sea level. South Dakota historian Doan Robinson is credited with conceiving the idea of carving the likenesses of famous people into the Black Hills region of South Dakota in order to promote tourism in the region. His initial idea was to sculpt the needles, however, Gutzon Borglum rejected the needles because of the poor quality of the granite and strong opposition from American Indian groups. They settled on Mount Rushmore, which also has the advantage of facing southeast for maximum sun exposure. Robinson wanted it to feature American West heroes such as Lewis and Clark, Red Cloud, and Buffalo Bill Cody, but Borglum decided that the sculpture should have broader appeal and chose the four presidents. Senator Peter Norbeck sponsored the project and secured federal funding. Construction began in 1927, and the president's faces were completed between 1934 and 1939. Gutzon Borglum died in March 1941, and his son Lincoln took over as leader of the construction project. Each president was originally to be depicted from head to waist, but lack of funding forced construction to end on October 31, 1941. Mount Rushmore attracts more than 2 million visitors annually. Topic: History. Originally known to the Lakota Sioux as the Six Grandfathers, Tunkasilla Sakpe or Cougar Mountain. IGMU Tonka Paha, the mountain was renamed after Charles E. Rushmore, a prominent New York lawyer, during an expedition in 1885. At first, the project of carving Rushmore was undertaken to increase tourism in the Black Hills region of South Dakota. After long negotiations involving a congressional delegation and President Calvin Coolidge, the project received congressional approval. The carving started in 1927 and ended in 1941 with no fatalities. As six grandfathers, the mountain was part of the route that Lakota leader Black Elk took in a spiritual journey that culminated at Black Elk Peak. Following a series of military campaigns from 1876 to 1878, the United States asserted control over the area, a claim that is still disputed on the basis of the 1868 Treaty of Fort Laramie. See section Controversy below. Among American settlers, the peak was known variously as Cougar Mountain, Sugarloaf Mountain, Slaughterhouse Mountain, and Keystone Cliffs. It was named Mount Rushmore during a prospecting expedition by Charles Rushmore, David Swansey, husband of Carrie Ingalls, and Bill Shalley. Historian Doan Robinson conceived the idea for Mount Rushmore in 1923 to promote tourism in South Dakota. In 1924, Robinson persuaded sculptor Gutzon Borglum to travel to the Black Hills region to ensure the carving could be accomplished. Borglum had been involved in sculpting the Confederate Memorial Carving, a massive bas-relief memorial to Confederate leaders on Stone Mountain in Georgia, but was in disagreement with the officials there. The original plan was to make the carvings in granite pillars known as the needles. However, Borglum realized that the eroded needles were too thin to support sculpting. He chose Mount Rushmore, a grander location, partly because it faced southeast and enjoyed maximum exposure to the sun. Borglum said upon seeing Mount Rushmore, America will march along that skyline. Congress authorized the Mount Rushmore National Memorial Commission on March 3, 1925. Between October 4, 1927, and October 31, 1941, Gutzon Borglum and 400 workers sculpted the colossal 60-foot high carvings of U.S. Presidents George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Theodore Roosevelt, and Abraham Lincoln to represent the first 130 years of American history. These presidents were selected by Borglum because of their role in preserving the republic and expanding its territory. The carving of Mount Rushmore involved the use of dynamite, followed by the process of honeycombing, 
a process where workers drill holes close together, allowing small pieces to be removed by hand. In total, about 450,000 short tons t of rock were blasted off the mountainside. The image of Thomas Jefferson was originally intended to appear in the area at Washington's right, but after the work there was begun, the rock was found to be unsuitable, so the work on the Jefferson figure was dynamited, and a new figure was sculpted to Washington's left. The chief carver of the mountain was Luigi Del Bianco, artisan and headstone carver in Port Chester, N.Y. Del Bianco emigrated to the U.S. from Friuli in Italy, and was chosen to work on this project because of his remarkable skill at etching emotions and personality into his carved portraits. In 1933, the National Park Service took Mount Rushmore under its jurisdiction. Julian Spots helped with the project by improving its infrastructure. For example, he had the tram upgraded so it could reach the top of Mount Rushmore for the ease of workers. By July 4, 1934, Washington's face had been completed and was dedicated. The face of Thomas Jefferson was dedicated in 1936, and the face of Abraham Lincoln was dedicated on September 17, 1937. In 1937, a bill was introduced in Congress to add the head of civil rights leader Susan B. Anthony, but a rider was passed on an appropriations bill requiring federal funds be used to finish only those heads that had already been started at that time. In 1939, the face of Theodore Roosevelt was dedicated. The Sculpture's Studio, a display of unique plaster models and tools related to the sculpting, was built in 1939 under the direction of Borglum. Borglum had planned to make a secret room behind the hairline of Abraham Lincoln which was supposed to be a doorway to a chamber originally intended to hold some of America's most treasured documents but was left unfinished due to his death. Borglum died from an embolism in March 1941. His son, Lincoln Borglum, continued the project. Originally, it was planned that the figures would be carved from head to waist, but insufficient funding forced the carving to end. Borglum had also planned a massive panel in the shape of the Louisiana Purchase commemorating in eight-foot-tall gilded letters the Declaration of Independence, U.S. Constitution, Louisiana Purchase, and seven other territorial acquisitions from Alaska to Texas to the Panama Canal Zone. In total, the entire project cost $989,992.32. Unusually for a project of such size, no workers died during the carving. Harold Spitznagel and Cecil Doty designed the original visitor center, finished in 1957. These structures were part of the Mission 66 effort to improve visitors' facilities at national parks and monuments across the country. On October 15, 1966, Mount Rushmore was listed on the National Register of Historic Places. A 500 word essay giving the history of the United States by Nebraska student William Andrew Burkitt was selected as the college age group winner in a 1934 competition, and that essay was placed on the entablature on a bronze plate in 1973. In 1991, President George H. W. Bush officially dedicated Mount Rushmore, in a canyon behind the carved faces as a chamber, cut only 70 feet 21 meters into the rock, containing a vault with 16 porcelain enamel panels. The panels include the text of the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution, biographies of the four presidents and Borglum, and the history of the U.S. The chamber was created as the entrance way to a planned Hall of Records. The vault was installed in 1998. Ten years of redevelopment work culminated with the completion of extensive visitor facilities and sidewalks in 1998, such as a visitor center, the Lincoln Borglum Museum, and the Presidential Trail. Maintenance of the memorial requires mountain climbers to monitor and seal cracks annually. Due to budget constraints, the memorial is not regularly cleaned to remove lichens. However, on July 8, 2005, Alfred Karcher GmbH, a German manufacturer of pressure washing and steam cleaning machines, conducted a free cleanup operation which lasted several weeks, using pressurized water at over 200 degrees Fahrenheit degrees Celsius. <laughs> Ecology The flora and fauna of Mount Rushmore are similar to those of the rest of the Black Hills region of South Dakota. Birds including the turkey vulture, bald eagle, hawk, and meadowlark fly around Mount Rushmore, occasionally making nesting spots in the ledges of the mountain. Smaller birds, including songbirds, nuthatches, and woodpeckers, inhabit the surrounding pine forests. 
Terrestrial mammals include the mouse, least chipmunk, red squirrel, skunk, porcupine, raccoon, beaver, badger, coyote, bighorn sheep, bobcat, elk, mule deer, yellow-bellied marmot, and American bison. The striped chorus frog, western chorus frog, and northern leopard frog also inhabit the area, along with several species of snake. Grizzly Bear Brook and Starling Basin Brook, the two streams in the memorial, support fish such as the longnose dace and the brook trout. Mountain goats are not indigenous to the region. Those living near Mount Rushmore are descendants of a tribe that Canada gifted to Custer State Park in 1924, which later escaped, at lower elevations, coniferous trees, mainly the ponderosa pine, surround most of the monument, providing shade from the sun. Other trees include the bur oak, the Black Hills spruce, and the cottonwood. Nine species of shrubs grow near Mount Rushmore. There is also a wide variety of wildflowers, including especially the snapdragon, sunflower, and violet. Towards higher elevations, plant life becomes sparser. However, only approximately 5% of the plant species found in the Black Hills are indigenous to the region. The area receives about 18 inches (460 mm) of precipitation on average per year, enough to support abundant animal and plant life. Trees and other plants help to control surface runoff. Dikes, seeps, and springs help to dam up water that is flowing downhill, providing watering spots for animals. In addition, stones like sandstone and limestone help to hold groundwater, creating aquifers. A study of the fire scars present in tree ring samples indicates that forest fires occur in the Ponderosa forests surrounding Mount Rushmore around every 27 years. Large fires are not common. Most events have been ground fires that serve to clear forest debris. The area is a climax community. Recent pine beetle infestations have threatened the forest. Topic: Geography. Topic: Geology. Mount Rushmore is largely composed of granite. The memorial is carved on the northwest margin of the Black Elk Peak granite batholith in the Black Hills of South Dakota, so the geologic formations of the heart of the Black Hills region are also evident at Mount Rushmore. The batholith magma intruded into the pre-existing mica schist rocks during the Proterozoic, 1.6 billion years ago. Coarse-grained pegmatite dikes are associated with the granite intrusion of Black Elk Peak and are visibly lighter in color, thus explaining the light-colored streaks on the foreheads of the presidents. The Black Hills granites were exposed to erosion during the Neoproterozoic, but were later buried by sandstone and other sediments during the Cambrian. Remaining buried throughout the Paleozoic, they were re-exposed again during the Laramide orogeny around 70 million years ago. The Black Hills area was uplifted as an elongated geologic dome. Subsequent erosion stripped the granite of the overlying sediments and the softer adjacent schist. Some schist does remain and can be seen as the darker material just below the sculpture of Washington. The tallest mountain in the region is Black Elk Peak, 7242 feet or 2207 meters. Borglum selected Mount Rushmore as the site for several reasons. The rock of the mountain is composed of smooth fine-grained granite. The durable granite erodes only 1 inch, 25 millimeters every 10,000 years, thus was more than sturdy enough to support the sculpture and its long-term exposure. The mountain's height of 5725 feet, 1745 meters above sea level made it suitable, and because it faces the southeast, the workers also had the advantage of sunlight for most of the day. Topic: Soils. The Mount Rushmore area is underlain by well-drained alphasol soils of very gravelly loam to silt loam texture, brown to dark grayish-brown. Climate Mount Rushmore has a humid continental climate DWB in the Köppen climate classification. It is inside a USDA plant hardiness zone of 5A, meaning certain plant life in the area can withstand a low temperature of no less than minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit minus 29 degrees Celsius. The two wettest months of the year are May and June. Orographic lift causes brief but strong afternoon thunderstorms during the summer. Tourism 
Tourism is South Dakota's second largest industry, and Mount Rushmore is the state's top tourist attraction. In 2012, 2,185,447 people visited the park. In the 1950s and 1960s, Sue Benjamin Black Elk, son of Medicine Man Black Elk, was the fifth face of Mount Rushmore, posing for photographs with thousands of tourists. He became one of the most photographed people in the world. Topic: <laughs> Conservation. The ongoing conservation of the site is overseen by the National Park Service. Physical efforts to conserve the monument have included replacement of the sealant applied originally by Gutzon Borglum, which had proved ineffective at providing water resistance. The components of Borglum's sealant included linseed oil, granite dust, and white lead, but a modern silicone replacement is now used, disguised with granite dust. In 1998, electronic monitoring devices were installed to track movement in the topology of the sculpture to an accuracy of 3 mm. The site was digitally recorded in 2009 using a terrestrial laser scanning method as part of the International Scottish 10 project, providing a high-resolution record to aid the conservation of the site. This data was made publicly accessible online. Topic: <laughs> Controversy. The Treaty of Fort Laramie 1868 had granted the Black Hills to the Lakota people in perpetuity, but the United States took the area from the tribe after the Great Sioux War of 1876. Members of the American Indian Movement led an occupation of the monument in 1971, naming it, Mount Crazy Horse, and Lakota holy man John Fire Lame Deer planted a prayer staff on top of the mountain. Lame Deer said that the staff formed a symbolic shroud over the president's faces which shall remain dirty until the treaties concerning the Black Hills are fulfilled." In 2004, Gerard Baker was appointed as superintendent of the park, the first Native American in that role. Baker has stated that he will open up more avenues of interpretation, and that the four presidents are only one avenue and only one focus. The Crazy Horse Memorial is being constructed elsewhere in the Black Hills to commemorate the American Indian leader as a response to Mount Rushmore. Upon completion, it will be larger than Mount Rushmore and has the support of Lakota chiefs. The Crazy Horse Memorial Foundation has rejected offers of federal funds, but it is the subject of controversy, even among Indian tribes. In popular culture Because of its fame as a monument, Mount Rushmore has been depicted in multiple places in popular culture. It is often depicted as a cover for a secret location, shown with faces removed or modified as in Superman 2, or added, or parodied. Trey Parker and Matt Stone used the location as the headquarters for their film Team America, World Police. National Treasure, Book of Secrets also depicts this location as a secret cover for a fictional gold city. The memorial was also famously used as the location of the climactic chase scene in Alfred Hitchcock's 1959 movie North by Northwest. Deep Purple's breakthrough album, 1970s in Rock, parodies the sculpture. <laughs> <laughs> Legacy and commemoration On August 11, 1952, the U.S. Post Office issued the Mount Rushmore Memorial Commemorative Stamp on the 25th anniversary of the dedication of the Mount Rushmore National Memorial in the Black Hills of South Dakota. On January 2, 1974, a 26-cent airmail stamp depicting the monument was also issued. See also List of colossal sculpture in SITU South Dakota portal <laughs>